is the most needlessly elaborate backstory. It's so, <laughs> so weird. Good. All they need, reminder, all they need is character is down on his luck. Yep. That's like all That's the, it. the script note be like, guy has bad things happen. And they're like, okay. So here I was meeting my ex at Nakatomi Plaza, right? And, all right, how much do you know about Hans Gruber? Do I need to explain? It's just so fucking ridiculous. Yup. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because real jobs make you brush your hair. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath has the day off, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am fabulous and resplendent, No Illusions. <laughs> Glad to hear it. And then for as far as the audience knows, it's true. And my hair is brushed. Also joining <laughs> us this week is our third favorite guest masochist. He's the host of the Opening Arguments podcast. I don't care what Andrew says. You're the one that welcomes him to the fucking show. You're the host. Also, Serious Inquiries Only, Philosophers in Space, and the Comedy Shoeshine podcast. Thomas, welcome back, sir. Third favorite, huh? Yeah. Third that's, favorite. That's <laughs> wow. very honored position. I mean, if you don't See, want I, it. it the, I thought the bit only works if you're like pretending that you like me. And I'm like, I don't believe you. But now you're just out with it. So it's like, oh, <laughs> oh I don't have a joke. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, I'm I'm third favorite. I get it. I, You know what, what? What happened to me? I used to have it all. I used to have a fast car. I had a girlfriend. I was the two time <laughs> champion of this podcast. I had everything. Why did God do this to me? Yeah, right. Right. Well, we're going to explore that question right after we answer this one. Have an uncooked egg. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Thomas, what will we be breaking down today? We are breaking down a YouTube video that I guess is a movie <laughs> called God, Where Are You? Which had the, I guess, the the decency to be shot in the cover of darkness. Like they knew <laughs> they knew they couldn't make this in the daylight. Like no one would let them. It's so fucking stupid. Every scene is at night for no reason. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, no, the, the movie couldn't get the rights today, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the sun backed got, out. It's like, yeah, fuck exactly. you. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to shoot when there was no moon. Like, they're like, not even the reflection no. of me contractually. You will hear from my lawyer. <laughs> so, and Eli, I think we've already hinted around about this quite a bit, but how bad was this movie? Well... If you've ever had a Christian try to sit you down and set you straight once and for all, but you were disappointed that three quarters of the way through the conversation, they didn't descend into oblique Lovecraftian madness, <laughs> you will love this movie. Let me explain. I went through three quarters of this movie being like, oh, this one's a little boring. Like, should I message yeah. Noah? And Thomas and tell him that we should watch. And then three quarters of the way through the movie was like, no, no, no. Stay with me, my friend. <laughs> oh, man. The last part of this movie is so batshit that, as you say, I, I love what I love about doing this show is that the shit gets so bad that it it becomes genre bending. If you just made a tweak, the billionaire money, if you just made a tweak and you turned the end of this movie into a Quentin Tarantino movie, it would have worked. Yes. There's a, we'll get to it. But it becomes so bad that it turns into another thing. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm looking forward to that revelation myself. All right. But before we get to that, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I got two. Oh, oh okay. so here I'll go first and I can round out the, the end. Maybe. <laughs> All right. First off, I know this is not literally true because you guys have done 290 fucking three of these things plus <laughs> however many things. But for me, best worst person who thinks there's no God. It's so, it's, God, there is no God. Anyway, why did God do this to me? Right. Was it the devil? Did the devil do it? God's in charge of anything. I don't believe in God. Why did God do this? Yep. It's a weird, like, they don't, they can't understand that I'm like, no, I don't believe in God. Well then, why did God do this? I, did you hear me? I don't, there yeah. isn't that. Right. What are you talking about? Right, they, they, like both have, they can't even get through the full sentence and have him <laughs> not. It's amazing. <laughs> so I was going to go with, and this is a, a another very competitive category in GAM universe, but best worst aggressive soundtrack. Oh, okay. Oh, God. I have one theory for how this movie is scored. They went to a Christian teen center where there was a battle of the Christian bands 
And in between everyone doing songs, yeah, these Christian bands had a fist fight. So they were <laughs> angrier and sadder <laughs> and worse at singing in between each song because they had been punched and wrestled more times. <laughs> in oh, each song. God, the score. You're so right. My note for this was it really makes you appreciate film scoring because this film score is just whatever shit song was next on this youth pastor's iPod shuffle. Like Absolutely. that was <laughs> yes. And it does. It's so, oh, uh, we get seven minutes into this movie. We get the uplifting song that should go 80% into the movie when you start to turn shit around you. Know, we get it seven minutes in and it's yep. insane. Like, it's like, what it was, we're still at the rock bottom. He does the thing. And then the next song, like, oh shit, we weren't supposed to be inspirational yet. So it has to take it back down. And they're so, I mean, I know it's Christian music, but it's so tell, don't show. Like yes. all the lyrics are so oh. literal. Is my plan good enough, God? What about my plan? That's literally the first <laughs> yes. song that blasts yes. over the whole. My plan is my plan good. No, we should do your plan, God. <laughs> this song's about God and his plan. Like tell as much all, as possible. All oh. lyrics. And even once in a while, they get the, like two times in the song, they have like Amazing Grace and some other like, you know, <laughs> Big, beautiful Christian song for, but they still managed to fuck those ones up by doing them terribly. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah. There is, I will, I'm not going to spoil it, but there is one very talented musician on this soundtrack. They're not a human being, but they are very talented. <laughs> Pinning that for a little bit later in the review. Yeah, for the beginning of Act Three, where everything <laughs> turns to batshit insanity. And on that note, I'm going to go with best worst. <laughs> Don't you see? Because <laughs> <laughs> look, the pattern of this movie is I'm sad. Bad things happen to me. Hello, I'm a magical black gentleman. Yep. I'm here mm -hmm. to make everything better. Don't you see? But they ran out of good. <laughs> this is why bad things happen to good people arguments 14 seconds into the movie. Yep. yep. So like they're stalling at gunpoint waiting for Godzilla. <laughs> the last three quarters of this are like baby cancer is a multiple choice test because too many gay people are married. What? <laughs> what did I say? Oh, good. I'll sneak my other one in on this one. It's kind of along the same lines. It's just a tag it going going forward, best, worst conversational non sequiturs. I think we're talking about the same <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, if I know Noah, I know that like, this is the kind of shit that just drives me nuts. Like, you're like, what? why is that a response to that? That's not right. what, yes, that exactly. what, what you, <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Uh, Speaking of the next item in the script, <laughs> yeah, constantly. Oh, God. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie revs up like a fucking sloth. So we're going to give it a quick head start while we take our first break. But we're going to be back in a flash with all the dumb person trying to write cleverness that is. God, where are you? Oh, man, it got under the wipers. Hey, Thomas, what are you doing out here washing your car? We have to record soon. Yeah, I'll be in a minute. I know it took a shit on my windshield. Oh, why did he do that? I assume because of this week's sponsor, Tushy. What's Tushy? The Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to level the playing field. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. What's a bidet attachment? It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80% by cleansing your butt with a precise stream of fresh water. Plus, it cleans itself before and after it's used with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. I see. And so Noah pooped on your car. To make the point that water is way better way to clean poop. Yeah, that's that's what I'm guessing. I mean, I got to admit, the product does sound good, but uh, what if a bidet, you know, isn't my thing? Every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Damn, that is good. Where do I sign up? Well, GAM listeners can go to hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off plus free shipping. Get 10% off plus free shipping and get your butt clean at hellotushy.com slash awful. Hellotushy.com slash awful. Hey, guys, are you ready to record? What's the hold up? Yeah, almost. Thomas is just taking care of what you did on his windshield as an ad for Hello Tushy. I didn't do that as an ad for Hello Tushy. You didn't? No, I did it because you cheated code names. I did not cheat. Don't make me do the back window, too. He will. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's meeting of God, Where Are You? Uh, you mean, Where Are You, God? Nope. 
Uh, no, that one was actually taken. Uh, God, comma, where are you? Question mark. That's what we're going to go with. Is there any chance? We already that- bought the fucking bot. Okay. It's God, where are you? Okay, okay. fine. So, as you know, our movie is going to be the relatable story of a world champion boxer who kills somebody in the ring, is bankrupted by the lawsuits against him, and ends up on the street homeless. Classic tale. I know, like, five guys who that's happened to. Right, don't we all? But then he has a series of conversations about apologetics with a magical black man. Bingo. I'm I'm sorry, what? Oh, I was just doing something for a podcast. Don't. Don't worry about it. Okay, so yeah, if you guys just want to throw out some apologetics about the problem of evil, uh, we can get started. Uh, Who are we to understand God's plan? Mysterious ways. Love it. Love Uh, it. Free free will. Sure, yep. Free will. Oh, my sister got divorced last year. Could we aim the camera at her wide-eyed pie face for half an hour? (laughs) You bet we can. Yes. Oh, and I can pretend to be a blind guy. You can? Yeah, sure. See, look. Who's there? I'm blind. So I, I can't see you. Yeah, I guess I guess blind people probably say that a lot. Yeah. They must, right? All the time. Right. Okay. I think this is a movie. Oh, sorry. Can we plug the gratitude journal that they sell at the CVS right next to the big book of extra easy word searches? <laughs> plug it? We can make the whole movie about it. Nice. How is your sister, by the way? Yelly. Yeah, sure. that sounds, sounds like mm-hmm. And we're back for the breakdown. And my very first note is, hey, music, pick a fucking genre, okay? <laughs> yeah, my Come music on. note is passive aggressive jazz at God. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have a lot of music notes in this one. My second note actually is music note. Actually, just shut the fuck up. Just, I don't care. You don't pick a genre. Just yeah, stop. I got a genre for you. John Cage. <laughs> Good to explore that one more. Oh. Yeah, no. I, and one of the songs right after, like there's a couple right in a row. Again, like you said, I mean, it's a fucking, it's just everybody's demo tape, like every Christian band's <laughs> demo tape. Yeah. For the whole movie, the entire, it never stops the entire movie. And one of them is like, I love it because each instrument is everything they're playing is like what you would learn within week one of playing the instrument. You yep. know, it's like the drums, yep. like, dun, ta, ta, dun, ta, 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 ta. Oh, okay, I think I got the drum. I think I got it. <laughs> right. The guitar's like, bam, 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 bam. Like, it's just, it's <laughs> so yep. basic. Yep. I'm like, why, why would you fucking just get somebody who plays stuff? You just hear a recorder in the background doing hot cross buns. Okay. Yep. yep. Come There's on, a fucking Steve. every is that a triangle? I think that's a fucking triangle. Yeah. <laughs> so and as that's going, we're watching like guy walk sadly down the street at night. He comes closer to the camera. We realize that he's homeless because he's all shitty and dirty. Apparently. Okay. Well, yeah, a circle of his well, sweatshirt yeah, exactly. is dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and I want to point out, this movie begins with one of my favorite Christian movie tropes, which is the actor has been asked to walk in time to the credits, but he walks too fast, so he has to go slow <laughs> for the last three steps across the scene. He tries to moonwalk for a little bit. <laughs> oh. All right, so then we cut to him. We get, the, you know, the, at length, we get the end of that fucking music. And then there's an African-American gentleman. He's like falling asleep outside. And there's an African-American gentleman asking if he's okay only through my right headphone. Oh, I know. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I, as always, I have so many sound notes that nobody cares about. The Foley in this movie is incredible. It's like, they, I don't know if they were paying by the hour for the Foley guy or something. Because he's like, I'll do five scenes. Yep. And so, like, <laughs> inexplicably, five scenes have this, like, really way too loud Foley and nothing else does. Yep. Yep. <laughs> There's, like, one where he's walking and it's like, ka-tunk, ka-tunk, like the old classic, like, 20s <laughs> radio footsteps, you know? Right, the, right. So what exactly. where he, like, he opens the book and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> like, he just opened it. It's not. <laughs> no, right. not a door, man. It's not a. <laughs> well, it, 
the same time, they, like the, whoever was doing the sound mixing, he's like, look, man, I'm charging you by the headphones so I can do left yeah. or I can do right. You, you're paying double if I'm doing both. Well, I think they were like, we'll have him be in the right and yes. then the flashback will come in the left. But it's like, no, nah, that doesn't fucking work. <laughs> <Nope>. That's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's All right, I'll tell you what. Ridiculous. I'll give you the footstep sounds and the book opening sounds, <laughs> but I will never remove when a microphone rubs against someone's shirt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, deal. deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this leads into the flashback where Sonny, that's our fucking hero, his name is Sonny. Uh, Sonny Boone, no less. <laughs> We're flashing back to his last boxing match. This is yeah. six months earlier. Keep in mind, this entire flashback happens in six months. And he's not boxing very well. We cut to these ridiculous announcers who've decided that, like, late in the eighth round would be a great time to give you the backstory and the basic dynamics of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> and furthermore, they're like, fighters, can you do nothing for 45 seconds while we talk about yep. you doing nothing? for <laughs> Like, that's not how fights work. Nope. And I'm glad Heath died before he had a chance to, because he would die again <laughs> if he had to put up with the sports balling that's going on in this movie. I mean, I'm sure Noah, you can appreciate this. Like I'm reading in the, in the fucking IMDB here. There's so much bullshit, <laughs> terrible boxing stuff. Like here's, here's what I wonder. Every athlete in the world is the most Jesusy person in existence. Why can't they find somebody when they make these shit movies, find a Jesusy sports person right. to just tell you all this stuff? Yeah. Cause he's the, two-time boxing champion of the world. Of the world? That's not anything. First off, <laughs> you have weight classes. So you'd be yeah. the heavyweight <laughs> champ. Right, yeah, exactly. You'd be the middleweight champ, the welterweight champ, whatever. And like, of the world, I mean, yeah, you might unite your titles or whatever. You might unite the belt. But like, the way they talk about everything is fucking wrong and it drives me so nuts. Also, also, could you have not gotten an actor, a lead actor, who had remotely a boxer's <laughs> physique for this? Yeah. I mean, the guy he's fighting looks like a boxer, more or less, but this guy, it's just, you know, he's in better shape than me, I guess. This guy is if you locked Josh Brolin in a shipping container for two weeks. <laughs> Full of pancakes. And, he's, yeah. and he survived on, like, rat droppings. He's like a tiny Josh Brolin. He's yep. not a boxer. No, he's like Thanos' little brother or something. <laughs> so, and then, by the way, there's never any reason for them to be standing there for so long talking about how bad he was doing in this fight or anything. Nope. That never matters. Because then at some point, the other fighter starts to taunt him, and Sonny punches him so hard in the chin that he dies. He dies instantly. <laughs> he dies from a chin punch. That fatal chin punch. It'll get you every time. Yeah, me help me out here, because the rest of the movie proceeds as though he knocked the guy out and then punched him a hundred times to a pulp after <laughs> the, you know, the, the ref. Like, that's how they treat the rest of the movie. Yes. Hit him with a folding chair. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Shoves the ref out of the ring and, like, keeps going at him. Wh what we see here is he punches him once, right? And then maybe there's, like, one more. Yeah, like, one as he's going down. Yeah. That's nothing. That's not even. Nope. That's just how it works. Yeah. If he happened to die, which has happened a couple times in, you know, in life, it, it would, they'd be like, oh, wow, that's a freak accident, man. Sorry. Ooh. Yeah. That poor boxer that was fighting him, he must feel real awful. Yeah. Right. But then they treat the rest of, they spend the rest of the movie acting <laughs> as though that's what happened. Yeah. The, the, and even the announcers say, I have no idea why he kept beating him. <laughs> Right. It's like, well, he didn't. Well, it's because it's a boxing match. They <laughs> treat him throughout the rest of the movie as though this was a tennis match. And yeah. he started punching. <laughs> if this is the world ping pong tournaments, the rest mm -hmm. of this movie makes a ton of sense. And I love it, too. Like, it's just another reason they don't know the sports anything. They tried to, in order to get out of this announcer dialogue, they're like, we'd better get in for a closer look. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right, what? Gonna, the announcers are going to get I hear up. the scene is ending. <laughs> They're, they're right there already. Like, announcers sit ringside. Right, yes, exactly. I, I can't even read his tattoos from here. Hold on a second. Let me, I'll report back to I'm, you. I'm going to go breathe in his last breath because then I'll have all his magic powers. <laughs> all right, so after the fight, Remo is, uh, sorry, Sonny's real name is, is, in case Sonny Boone wasn't a dumb enough fucking nickname, yeah. the character's real name is Remo. <laughs> I'll, I'll refer to him as Sonny throughout, or at least I'll try. So Sonny's in the back with his trainer. 
And I love that the trainer gives away that the guy's dead too quick. He's like, oh, you killed the guy. And and Sonny's like, what? He's dead? And he's like, well, I, we don't know that, but I mean, he could be yeah. dead. And then a guy comes in and he's like, oh, my God, he got killed. And he's like, ah, see, he got killed. <laughs> yeah. The, and the delivery, too, is like, yeah, he's dead. He is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. terrifying. like right, The yeah. director's like, yeah, now he's dead. There's no. Del- <laughs> oh. No, he's dead. He oh, is dead. Like, got that. <laughs> I got the text alert. I got it. I just want to add, we do get as he, like right before he allegedly kills the guy, we get a shot of a black guy walking out. And like the implication is like the black guy caused it or something. It's really weird. I don't know what we're supposed to think in that oh, moment. Oh, that's going to come back at the end of the movie. <laughs> it, it, it is. But yeah, at, the very, at that moment, it, it had a very like, I didn't come here to watch this guy punch a dude to death kind of a feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like legitimately, it looks like our main character was like, what black guy? Oh, I'm going to kill this guy. You know, like, yeah, right. That's what it looked like. <laughs> right. You didn't tell me there would be black people in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I swear to you. I was like, is that going to be the angle here? Like he's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, but then he hastily leaves from the fight and then he goes to drive back home. In in the middle of the day. So apparently this fight was happening at like two in the afternoon or something. So he goes back to home and there's there are people. There's like this tiny smattering of eight people standing around his mansion with it's placards so that it's say so murder. <laughs> it's so funny. I was listening to the fight on the radio when I heard what happened. I was like, honey, get the crafting supplies. We gotta make signs. <laughs> As fast as we got to beat him home. I know they won't look great, but it's about the timing. Like if we get there, we can make an excellent sign and we show up too late. That won't do anything. We got, you know, we'll already be home. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> We've been planning this for weeks, hoping that you would kill that guy in the ring. I know. And it's like, call the, call the group, you know, the group, the Facebook yeah, group right. we have. Yeah, exactly. It's like people ready to protest a boxer who killed a guy. Call him. This is the moment we've been waiting for. This is the day. Yeah. Boxing yeah. wives matter. Rapid yeah. response protesters. So- yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Yeah, and so we cut over from there. You can't even get into his house, so we cut from there over to his hearing at the Florida Boxing Commission. Oh, God. Where the world champions adjudicated, apparently. Because, you know, they have those world championship boxing matches in Florida so often. It's a big (laughs) boxing state. Yeah. So, But we learn here that the panel has revoked his boxing license. In Florida. Well, yeah, yep. but 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 the national boxing licensing guys are probably. I know. I do love that they did bother. Like someone was trying to keep an eye for the details. Like, well, this is just one state. What about? Uh, and we're going to encourage every other state as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now you can only box in South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> we have a big interstate boxing conference luncheon, yeah. and we will be bringing this up. It's new. <laughs> Reminder, key to this story is this was his last fight. Yeah. We find out later this that was the whole plan. It was his last fight. And then we're like, we're supposed to care that you lost your boxing license. Okay, I'm not doing that. Yeah, anymore. right. Like, yeah, cool. that was that was you were planning to retire after <laughs> this anyway. But yeah, but the gavel falls with a literal thunderclap. The the folding yeah. guy was <laughs> fucking with him at this point. And the Florida the Florida Boxing Commission must have been like, Oh, we get to use the gavel? Yeah, bring the gavel today. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why we have that. We barely ever use it. Bring the Rock, paper, scissors gavel. for who the gavel guy is. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me because I could do a good slow mo hard gavel. I practiced it. <laughs> All right. So and and by the way, just so in case that scene was a little too mysterious, we weren't really catching all the nuance. We cut from that to a big headline that says Boone banned from boxing in state of Florida. <laughs> Front page. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. yeah, exactly. It's like bingo. Boone banned from boxing. <laughs> the, yes. you know, it's got to add a few more. B words. <laughs> so, they should have done that. Actually, would have yeah, been like, <laughs> thanks, well. So and then we get the scene where like his life is falling apart. We see um his car is getting repossessed, his his girlfriend is leaving him. In my note I have, damn, his mom left him? That sucks. <laughs> 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 when things get so bad, your mom breaks up with you. That, yeah, right. That's always no. <laughs> Well, what I love, too, about this series of scenes is they keep having, like, you know, his car will be being repossessed or he's being a victim yeah. from his mansion. And he keeps just wandering into the scene going, oh, man, come on. What is he? he does that, like, in all, in, in all three, in the car, the wife, <laughs> and the house, as though they're, like, surprising him with all of these. <laughs> and so he's got, okay, This there's so much here. I'm so sorry. There's a lot of times where there isn't a lot, but I got to spend a minute here. Yes, First please. off, music note. 
weak ass electric guitar tone. Like I can, this is like when I first was trying to play electric guitar and I had it plugged into my like Windows 95 PC trying to get like a tone. <laughs> yep. You know, it's just like, <laughs> meow, meow, meow. you're like, God, fuck you. That sucks. Anyway, also his mom left him. Also, we get this. So he gets foreclosure notice on his mansion. What? So like, what? that's not how, I mean, <laughs> mm, you just sell it, it. You sell it. If you can't, right. oh, I can't. This is too big for me now. I can't afford it. Sell your mansion, you fucking idiot. Right. And then he, it's like the foreclosure guy is just following behind him, putting foreclosure on everything. <laughs> Gets in a car, foreclosed your car, man. It's over. Gets well, in a right. telephone booth, foreclosed it. Yeah, right. Because we, we actually watch him get evicted from his mansion and yeah. then evicted from a shitty apartment. It's been yeah. six months. <laughs> Do you not understand how this works? Like you have to pay the thing that you live in. You have to pay it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't get it. I just I don't understand. understand. I understand. <laughs> I've just been moving into places until the sign guy shows up. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, that's and what it's shot like. <laughs> the movie tries to explain how a world champion boxer could go broke from one boxing match. And they're like, well, it's because we gave him your purse. Yeah. And also... All your other money. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, oh, that's the problem because, you know, realistically, you could be like, well, of course they sued him for all he's worth, you know, and they, they whatever. But that doesn't work with the later plot right. of yep. like, they forgive him. So they have to like find a way for this to make sense. Yeah. Spoiler, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Nope. They he's don't. A two time <laughs> boxing champ. Oh, all right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh, we also, I love this. Just in case we weren't getting just how down on his luck the guy is, we get the scene where the, People in the car have to turn around so they can throw <laughs> soda at him. It's so, look, oh my God, it's so bad. He is walking down the median in a full hoodie over his head and they approach him from behind. Yes. And they're driving, they're like, hey, isn't that that one guy who that wears boxer? a hoodie in our town? Like, <laughs> that's dirty? Like, come on. If there's anything I know about as a rebellious teen, it's the reverse profile of world champion <laughs> disgraced boxers. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around so I can throw my slushie at him. Yeah, and exactly. then they throw a water bottle. Hold on. They throw a water bottle and she goes, killer. Ha 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 ha. And then they leave. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Though? Do you either have like the energy and the focus to be like, this man's a killer. Fuck you, man. You're a killer. Or <laughs> you don't give a shit and you're like, ha, ha, ha. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's not both. This is a very killer, weird ha, ha, ha. middle ground. <laughs> yes. It's so funny that you killed a guy. Ha, ha. Water bottle at you. You deserve a soda in the face. So <laughs> so now we're, and, and by the way, now we're all caught back up with the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. That all happened in six months. So this African-American gentleman is going like, hey, man, it's cold out here. Do you want to come inside? He says, you look hungry. I'm like, how does one look? Hung Are there flies crawling on his face or something? <laughs> and we should point out that, uh, the gentleman, he will be a magical black gentleman. Yes. And he will telegraph that fairly early on and throughout the movie because every line he delivers will be delivered like this. Like it's the final word said by a character before they turn into <laughs> dust and into a magical tuxedo that Sonny's going to wear to the ball. <laughs> oh, God. And he, uh, so the second time I watched this through, I watched it at 1.75x. And what's funny is that actually turns the pacing into normal pacing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There is so much dead fucking nothing. This magical black man asks him to try to feed him for 20 minutes. Like, yes. he's just like, are you sure? Yeah. Could you use a donut? How about a, he goes through every food. Right. Group yeah, in the exactly. Food pyramid. <laughs> How about an apple bacon? Glass of orange Jeez. juice. You're like, fucking, you have nothing better to do <laughs> than just beg a white dude to feed him like forever. Uh, I'm watching this on YouTube. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm watching ads to see this. Right? Like, <laughs> the, the people who made this movie should have to watch ads for me to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's actually a. New billion dollar business right? idea. Yeah. Oh. Make these <laughs> shitty Christian movie makers have to watch ads to make us watch. Oh my there God. You know. Okay. I'm going to call so, some people. <laughs> so, so finally at length, Sonny agrees to follow the, this guy's, this character's name is Malachi, by the way, just in case he wasn't angelic enough. Wait for you. a minute. That doesn't <laughs> sound like a normal human name. <laughs> 
So yeah, so Malachi invites him inside this diner, and we know he's magical. In case, well, I mean, we know he's magical because he's a black character, and we're watching a Christian movie. Of course, but <laughs> but when he goes into the diner, the diner's closed, so he waves his hand in front of the lock, and it unlocks. We will see this magical hand wave lock trick seventeen times in this yes, movie. Yes, we will. <laughs> it happens every time. That's brilliant. Be honest. By the last time he magic unlocked the door, I was crying with laughter. Yeah, and like I have the note there, you know, before seeing or talking to you guys, that like he's literally a magical black man. Like they're like, yeah. this is almost like they're aware of the trope and they're trying to fuck with us. Like, yep. See, like, magic. Like, yeah. like the chimes, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and it's so cloying. Sorry, it's just the magical black man. They have to play this thing. Like, okay, you let him in, you're going to feed him. You don't have to wait on him hand and foot. He's like, do you want to sit down here? Should I wipe your ass before you sit down? What about if I clean the yeah. thing? He's just all over him. I'm just like, dude, fucking, ah. <laughs> if a magical angel came down to do an intervention and did that, I'd be like, you're getting a little clingy, man. Like, can I, <laughs> get, you know. Right. I wrote my notes here. I was like, can you imagine writing this dialogue and then not setting it on fire and then yourself, <laughs> like diving <laughs> onto the fire that you just created? So they start talking and of course, there are two basic gists to the conversation from Sonny's perspective. One is that there is no God and God didn't doesn't exist. The other is that it's all God's fault that he's in such a bad spot. And why did God do this to him? Yep. yep. But that opinion will change word to word in the same yeah. sense. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes. It'll it'll be it'll be back and forth like a goddamn heartbeat monitor. Within dependent and independent clauses, <laughs> it changes whether or not he's yes. talking about God not existing or God did a thing to him bad. Yes. Exactly. Like nobody is like that. Shut up. God. Also, okay, so he's supposed to be a homeless and starving, so they bring him out this bacon and eggs, and he eats really fast and everything. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and I get why this is done in movies, but, like, you have to at least recognize that what we're watching is a guy with a sloppy-ass beard scarf down food all grossly. He so gets egg in his <laughs> nose. <laughs> yeah. <In it. laughs> I am not lying. This is not no, a comedy bit. No, it's, it's in his I mean, nose. It's, it's pretty fucking funny, but yes, it's it's, it, it's yeah. like oh. absolutely disgusting to watch. And they they hold on to it for so long. We want we come back to it. The black guy gets up and goes to talk to another ghost customer that's in his diner or whatever. <laughs> and we watch fucking Sonny scarf more eggs and shit. It's bad. It's got fucking shitty actors are the worst. It never ends. You can't just be like, hey, so here's your here's your thing in the scene. You're hungry. Oh, okay. I'm going to kind of eat a little fast. Nope. <laughs> like shoving fucking no. cracking eggs into his mouth, like chewing the full like egg shell. Like just oh, eats the table. No. I'm sorry. Can you eat your eggs like the Tasmanian devil going down on the ass of little Nas for the first time after 20 years apart? That's what we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And this is where we get the line because uh, I think he starts complaining about his fucking bullshit story. He's like, I could have been a multimillionaire. Oh, okay. I know. I know I already said this. Two time world <laughs> champion of boxing. He's not a could've multimillionaire. Yeah, he doesn't exactly. have two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> not two million dollars. Two time. Not like, oh, got lucky. I was a challenger. Like you could conceive of like, yeah, I took a fight short notice because someone got hurt. I was a challenger. Got in. Didn't make much money on the first championship that I got lucky on. That wouldn't be unifying a bunch of belts, by the way, but whatever. Okay. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Two time world champion, yes. <laughs> not a multimillionaire. Okay. <laughs> sure. Well, they also have this conversation where like, so him and Malachi are talking and he's like, oh, you know, I got it pretty bad. I, it's, it's, God fucked me so bad. I have such a bad life and everything. And Malachi's like, well, um, the other guy in the fight died. So, yeah. I mean, like, if, I mean, like if, we're, if we're just comparing the two of you and then Sonny and he'll stick to this for the like next 25 minutes of the movie starts arguing that no, no, no. The dead boxer had it way better than he did. Yep. <laughs> He got to keep my money. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, we should also point out, by the way, this actor, Wade Wallace, the, the guy playing... Starved Josh Brolin? So, yeah, exactly. Starved Josh Brolin is doing this entire bit in Eli's Batman voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same note. Same note. <laughs> I, I had, in fairness, my note was, oh, 
wow, he sounds like a better Batman than Ben Affleck. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's true. There's at least that. But yeah, he complains to Malachi that God doesn't exist and is fucking him. And Malachi, Malachi at one point is just like, man, you know, we just are having the same conversation over and over again. I'm going to go talk to my ghost customer over here and then he'll, <laughs> he'll disappear a little later. This year. He goes and talks to the firefighter guy. Yeah. And because this movie thinks that we're really fucking stupid, it's kind of hinting around. He's like, yeah, he used to be a firefighter until there was a terrible accident. He- <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, so, and, and he's like, oh. I know. It's so ham fisted. It doesn't trust you at all. But practically, the black guy's like, I'm going to go talk to my ghost. Did I say ghost? Man. I meant toast. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to my entirely alive customer over here. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to hold? onto his sweater you can give it back to him tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> but so th- there's also this great moment where like he's like okay well you're homeless so here's a card of a pastor down the street that can put you up for the night and he's like oh I knew it you and your Jesusy bullshit trying to <laughs> shove God down my throat by giving me a warm bed in which to sleep I'm an atheist and I hate God yeah because the, the big issue we take with pastors and their flock <laughs> is all the free things they give away. Yep. <laughs> well, plus, like, how thick are you? You didn't know that Malachi, the guy who was open the ghost diner for you to come in and was like, going to try and, and yeah, ask you about whether Paul, God waiter, exists. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's, this has to do with God? Yeah. Oh. Oh. I thought this was just a he, I thought you were angling for gay sex. This is weird now. This is weird. <laughs> that would have been better. And then, so he goes to leave to go to this homeless shelter and Malachi stops him. He says, hey, would you mind coming and going through the back door? And he's like, really? He's like, nah, man, I just always wanted to say that to a white guy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Here's the thing, though. The sub theory that I had throughout this movie that Malachi is just a crazy Christian who breaks into this diner (laughs) so that he can give down on their luck people evangelical pep talks is enforced by that line. Yes, it is. And there's also no reason why that would ever be the case. Thank you. Well, okay. My note was like, all right, I'll bite. Why the back door? Why does that matter? Why does that matter? (laughs) No, I don't get it. You've already, you broken in your, the lights are on. You're eating in the diner. Everybody can, is that like you're sneaking out? I don't (laughs) fucking understand. (laughs) No idea. Ah, uh, well, so, but just in case we were wondering about that, the soundtrack screams us into submission. Okay. Okay. There is no way for me to communicate how loudly and quickly they blast this teenager singing as I went down yeah. to the river to play. I'm literally, it's like this quiet scene. He's like, I'll see you next time, friend. All right, man. Okay. As I went down to the river. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what happens. Eli wrote in the notes because he watched it before me. He turned his like he he cranked up his font size and just wrote, "Turn your headphones down." No, no, Eli gave like a genuine safety warning. Yes, like he was actually right. concerned for us, like guys, just in case you know, like yeah, you know, it's all fun and games, but like hearing lo- damage honestly, is a real thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you never, you never get those back. I was wearing ear and ear headphones for this. I had no escape. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell too because they start. I think the people singing backup, singing harmony, you know, because that song in you know, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, has fantastic har- harmonies. Oh yeah, and yeah. so you can tell that the harmonizers are like it doesn't matter because you're screaming so loud. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what notes I sing under that. You know, they're like, as I love, what the yeah, fuck's whatever. the point? They just like quit. Eh. Eh. <laughs> so. And then, okay, now here's, this is such a stupid fucking movie. So what's supposed to happen now is that he goes to the shelter, the church shelter. He spends the night at the church. The next night, once again, he has nowhere to stay and nothing to eat. So he goes back to the diner. But we never see a day. No. Right? We, so what we see is him walking into the shelter, into the church at night, walking back out still at night and back to the diner. So for all we know, he just like forgot his watch. You know, and went back to the dead. Hey, man, did I leave? But I guess he slept 24 hours. Yep. That must be it. I don't know. 
I mean, either that or like we got a dark city situation. Like there's yeah. oh, okay. weird All right. yes. <laughs> who are harvesting. I'm glad you guys got to watch this scene because my entire notes for this scene are just them trying to adjust the volume to human level. <laughs> wrote, if a pop-up had appeared on my screen that offered to stop that song, I would have paid whatever it asked. <laughs> As a yeah. microtransaction? Yeah, like a hacker situation. They're like, Absolutely. we'll give you control of your computer back from the song for a million dollars. We have videos of you jerking off and we'll turn off down to the rhythm yeah, of play. Right. All right. Yeah, so, man. Let's like, buy some videos. Bitcoin. Just, yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie teased me for a second, like, you know, with the thought that it wasn't all going to take place in this fucking diner. But now it is. <laughs> so while I deal with that fucking betrayal, we're going to pause for another quick break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more. God, where are you? But but I called Vladimir Chatil and he said it wasn't in the spirit of the game. I mean, I don't want to get Spinozian deconstructionist on a board game, but if he didn't put it on the two sheeter, that's on him. You, you, you're destroying society. Hey, guy, what's up? Hey, Eli, what you eating? Gum. How many pieces of gum? But in heaven. Wow, that's uh, that's a lot of gum. Why? Uh, I'm guessing quip. What's quip? Quip? Is the hey, Eli, quip? Eli, why don't you just let me take this one? Okay. So it, it was only a few short years ago that Quip reinvented the toothbrush for the modern age, and they've done it again this time for chewing gum. They've launched a new gum that actually is good for your oral health and comes with a dispenser that will remind you of the one-click candy that you loved as a kid. Wait, candy that's good for your teeth? Get out of here. It's true. Quip gum can help prevent cavities and freshen breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free and has tooth-friendly xylitol with zero calories. And to satisfy your taste buds, Quip added a long-lasting mint flavor, crunchy tri-layer design, and stamped it all with the classic quip tongue. What? I I think he said plus it comes in a super cool container. And it does. The slim travel ready dispenser available in five colors, metal or plastic packs and protects up to 10 gum pieces at a time and fits in just about any purse or pocket for on the go. And in a world where we all need to be extra safe and hygienic, the quick release button means that you can still share with friends. No wrappers, hands or hassles. It, I, it, it shoots out like pick I see. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you can get a free plastic dispenser with any refill plan. That's a free dispenser at getquip.com slash awful, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. You can also find the Quip electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and more in the oral care aisle at your local Walmart. Quip, the good habits company. Thanks, Noah. I'll check it out. Ah, But uh, maybe stick to one or two pieces. Yeah, that looks like a toddler's brain. Right? Really does. But tell me, Sonny, how can God be the cause of your troubles if he doesn't exist? You don't understand, man. You'll never understand. Now, how about some peach pie, huh? Yeah, actually, some, some peach pie sounds good. God damn it, dude. You got to stop doing this. Oh, oh uh, uh, he's a demon. He's here to tempt you. You can't just uh, break in here and try to convert people to your religion. That, that This is my business. Oh, damn it. You got into the pies again. A toaster. Whoa. You hit that guy in the head. Oh, he's a demon, Sonny. It was a demon. Okay, I think I'm going to go. Mm, don't you want to finish your pie? No. Um, no, I'm just going to go. Fine. Well, pie for me then. And Jesus. Oh, Jesus God, pie. what? Oh, call an ambulance. Shh, you're a demon. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin Sonny at the diner where Malachi is going to bitch at him for not saying thank you to the waiter like he's a fucking five year old or something. And at first, it seems like just, it seems like Malachi is just like a bitchy babysitter or something but apparently that's essentially the plot of the movie is that he needs to learn to be more thankful yeah this is where christianity is gonna ruin gratitude journaling <laughs> oh is that a thing yeah it's like a thing and there's some somewhat decent science about it helping with like anxiety and depression when when in conjunction with therapy and medicine and that kind of stuff and christianity is like mine 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's so upsetting 
It's also upsetting because I've been doing it since the start of COVID. And oh, it's like yeah. finding out that me and Marjorie Taylor Greene both do CrossFit. I'm like, well, yeah. no, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, so do you do pull-ups like that <laughs> fucking insane <laughs> method? That's not a pull-up then. At least call it something else. A pull-up, you're working the certain muscles. The pull, yeah, that's a fucking noodle that you you like, dude. That's that breakdancing move, but on a, that's not <laughs> the oh. worm. It's the it's worm. Hanging yeah. The worm. So they're having, the, they're sitting at the diner having this conversation, and Malachi has to stop again to talk to another one of his ghost customers. <laughs> well, well, and I, I wasn't sure at this point. Like again, the metaphysics, and I was like, well, time to go send another poor bastard to their maker. Like I thought he was like <laughs> killing him. I wasn't sure. Like he was the last stop. Oh, like, I got gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I don't know. Like, See, it's time to pass judgment on another soul. I'll be right back. Be right back. Enjoy your bacon. Oh, <laughs> that would be a Christian worldview. Is the last thing you do before you pass on to the afterlife is shitty diner coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So he comes back and he's like, "So, so what's that old lady story?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, she lost her job that she had for a lot of years." He's like, "See, no God, motherfucker." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Proof. And then he's like. Well, don't be so fast. Half a millionaire start their businesses oh, after 60. God. And I'm like, what? Dude, I'm going to Google that. And it's immediate. I got I got into like half of millionaires and Google was like, no, <laughs> no, that's no. I was going to say half of a millionaires are born into it. I would imagine. <laughs> I was just waiting for this. Half of millionaires in this country start their businesses after the age of 80 was a quote that Malachi, the angel of God, said. Well, <laughs> after the age of 60, but yes. yeah, After the age of 60, sorry, yeah. I, this is the only time anyone's ever heard that sentence without being sold thrive right afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you expect Malachi to be like, and therefore, the capital gains tax, too hot, like, to <laughs> go directly into the camera. Millionaires built this country. They're the employers. They're, they're the reason. The you know, like it just creators. goes right in. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, I love this quote because obviously, like, even let's let's assume it were true just for fun. Mm -hmm. There's no way that half of millionaires are millionaires because they started businesses. That's not. There's no, no way. Like no, half of no. millionaires are. You were a boomer and you bought a house in 1970 for five dollars and right. a fucking yes, you know, bottle exactly. cap, and, and then you <laughs> held on to it, and now it's worth. Two million, a million dollars. dollars. Yes, right. Right. exactly. And then you probably, when you were 65, you're like, oh, because I'm white, I have $2 million now because that's how this country works back then. So I will start a bullshit business right. that sucks. And then I will contribute to this. Statistic. I'll start a little fucking yarn store downtown. Uh -huh. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Here's my favorite part of this is when I was searching this quote. The other suggested quote that came up is half of millionaire gamblers play poker on like a we can teach you how to win it poker website. <laughs> so Google literally was like, I hear you like stupid shit. Would you like this stupid shit? But that is OK. But that is 70 times more useful than this fucking stupid yeah, quote. Right. That's at least saying, hey, do you think for some dumb reason that you're going to make money gambling, idiot? Well, if you are, at least try poker, something that has some amount yeah, that of skill you can that get you can better learn, at. Yeah, exactly. Rather than fucking, yeah, like roulette or something. <laughs> or scratch off tickets. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. But so Malachi, here's the point that this stupid fucking movie is making is that Malachi is pointing out to him like, yeah, this old lady lost her job and she thought that it was the, you know, that everything had really gone to hell for her. But it turned out that that was what she needed to start her own business. And now and then she became a millionaire and Ugh. and then she died. Right. Because like she we will find out later that all of these people are dead. But <laughs> so like it, eventually it ended up bad. <laughs> For her. <laughs> All the stories are sad by the end. And in the middle of this fucking another lec condescending lecture by Tucker Carlson, magical black man, I just wrote down, dude, just find another ghost diner. This one is so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> is there an Islam ghost diner you could yes, just yes. for spice things yeah. up with a little Buddhist bit? Buddhist ghost diner would be nice. You'd shut the sure, fuck up. Yeah. You would just be quiet. <laughs> then you think you, you're in a better ghost diner. You're like, oh, this is just a Denny's. Like, oh, oh shit. These <laughs> people aren't dead. They look dead. They look dead, but they're not. Oh. The kind of ghost diner. It's, it's like being dead. Yeah. <laughs> Their dreams have died, but they're actually not dead. <laughs> On the outside, they're still alive. It's like... <laughs> 
but so apparently Sonny feels the same way, right? He's like, this is stupid. I We just had the same conversation in the last goddamn scene. And he's like, no, no, no. Sit down and tell me more about your backstory. He's like, I don't know. He's like, there will be pie. He goes, okay, all right. I was champ twice of the like, entire world of boxing. He's like, I want to get your take. And I'm like, you want his take on the whole he pounded a guy to death thing? What is the take <laughs> that you... <laughs> You see, he had it coming or something. Like, what is he going to say? I don't know. <laughs> well, he did. We're going to learn. But yes. So. <laughs> well, and, and again, like the character, Sonny, feels the same way. He's like, well, you already said you knew who I was. Like, obviously, you would know my story if you knew who I was. And he's like, look, <laughs> yeah. man, there is over an hour left in this movie. I'm going to need more than that. And he's like, all right. OK, all right. But I had it all. And then. And then God took it all away. And he's like, did he take it all away? Because, I mean, the boxing dude died. And he's like, well, OK, man, stop it with that shit. OK. <laughs> yeah. And then he gives him the gratitude right after he says, I wish I was the dead guy because his family has my money. He's like, all right, this seems like a weird transition, but here's your gratitude journal. <laughs> Read the first <laughs> chapter. And this, okay, I, I'm prepared for you to tell me that I'm just dumb or something. Is this a book or is it a journal? Right, it's unclear. Sometimes it's a. Sometimes he's like, read the first chapter of this journal I gave you, but it's a journal. I did. Do I write the chapter and then read it? I don't understand. <laughs> what do I not know? What a journal is, guys? What? What am I? We're, we're to believe it's like a third grader's combination workbook slash. Yes, yes. Exactly. You know, like yeah. that's it. It's a workbook. It's a goddamn workbook for grown ups. Yeah. It's the Christian workbooks you buy while you're standing there at CVS. And you're just like, oh, I do need to get closer to the Lord. Or do I want a jumbo scramble? No, no, I'm going to get closer to the Lord with a gratitude journal. Right, but also, but also, it's just a reminder that when Christians read three hundred page books, it's because two hundred and fifty of those pages are blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, so Sonny goes off to to sad at the shelter, and, and he picks up the book and he thinks about not reading the book, and and then he does read the book, and I wrote, he reads, he reads in the movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Noah. I'm so glad that you were paying attention to the reading because I was paying attention to the couch he is sitting on, yeah. which is proof that there is no God. I will take <laughs> the Pope Francisco Francini himself, show him that couch, and he will rip off his magic hat and start fucking a dude on the spot, my friends. It's like a little girl's drawing of a horse got knitted into the back of a 1970s porn set. <laughs> best worst couch yeah okay yes all right and it's funny too because malachi told him you're gonna be so grateful for the nice warm bed you have right. and then it's this and then he's and like, yeah. sleep on a couch oh what? for one malachi like i'm not <laughs> writing that in my journal i mean like yeah right like it, you didn't I, it's look if you're homeless i'm sure a couch and a blanket is great and everything but you didn't have to have the character say be thankful for your nice warm bed and then immediately show him going to sleep on a couch yeah i love the reading process too because it looks like all right i'll at least do the crossword that's in this you know, workbook. <laughs> right. and he's like yeah. no nah, that's too hard i'll do i'll do the jumble yeah right exactly. he's like, ah, jumble's yeah, too hard that. i'll read garfield <laughs> <laughs> he's like ah, i don't understand the garfield this week i guess i'll just go to bed and then he just goes to sleep like that's the process he it's, goes through. it's almost like he picks it up and he goes like wow it would be really boring to watch me read this is not gonna work and he picks up the pencil and he goes just as boring to watch me write fuck no, all right. <laughs> Problem not solved. Uh, I'll curl I guess up I'll and sleep. Cry. Do you oh, want to God. watch me masturbate? Before? No, I'll just sleep. All right. Just sleep. Okay. Well, then I'll just I'll tug one out later. Okay. And then sometime later, also at night, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's walking down the road. He's going back to the fucking diner because that's all this movie's got to offer. And some lady pulls up in a van and offers him a ride. Oh my God. 
Yeah, in a movie of stupid, useless scenes, this is the most stupid and useless. She's <laughs> amazing. She was the first sign that this movie had something good in store. Because I don't yes, know about yes. you guys. At this point in the movie, I was super duper bored. And I was like, ah, like how many conversations can I describe? Yeah. Well, I can describe this conversation for the <laughs> rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she says, you need a ride? And he's like, no, I'm literally going see that building right across the street there that's where i'm going she's like i'll yeah. give you a ride right across the street and he goes i don't i don't i smell homeless and shit and then he agrees yes. like okay drive me across the street he's like what is the well and then she's like okay but buckle your seat belt he's like we're going we're pulling into the parking lot from here like, i'm sorry <laughs> i have to talk about the buckle your seat belt thing yeah. when she says buckle your seat belt her seat belt is not buckled Cuts over to him being like, okay. And then when it cuts back, she is yes, wearing uh -huh. her seatbelt. Mm -hmm. They didn't go back and have her redo that line wearing a seatbelt, but they did later have her put on a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> and then she says, well, God doesn't promise tomorrow to anyone. And what it's setting up should be she pulls out and instantly is plowed through by a giant <laughs> truck. Like, that should be. And then like in the wreckage, you know, where they're like barely they come to and she's like, See, you know, like that would have been seatbelts. And and she's like, she's like, I recognize you. You're the killer boxer guy. And he's like, oh, are you a boxing fan? She's like, no, my ex-husband was a big boxing fan. He's like, oh, I see. Will that or the fact that you recognize me ever matter to anything whatsoever in this movie? She's like, nope, nope. Just needed to fill 80 more seconds with dialogue. She also squeezes in some more boxing ignorance by saying, yeah, your first championship. Yes. Like, you don't, you would, you'd say like your first title, your first belt. Right, you yeah, don't, exactly. I didn't win the boxing championship. Like, it's, I don't know. It's bracketed that, tournament. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And look, as ham fisted and terrible as this is, this is also that this woman can tell her bad things happen to me, but God meant for good things to happen to me story. <laughs> yep. And they could not take a longer or more circuitous <laughs> or more resentful route to get there. Hi, can I give you a ride? No. Please? Okay, fine. I'll take a ride. Would you like to hear my story? No, I would not like to hear your story. <laughs> Looks like the restaurant's closed. Do you want to hear it now? Nah, I'm just going to go take a shit in the bushes. Well, I can tell you my story from the other side of the bushes. Fine. You can tell me your story while I shit in the bushes. I was a gun girl in Bayonne, New Jersey. It's fucking amazing. They spend seven yeah. minutes of the protagonist absolutely refusing while this woman just salivates at the chance to do her big <laughs> monologue. Yeah. It's like the director told him, like, you're the stand-in for the audience here. And he really <laughs> took that and ran with it. He's like, well, if I'm the audience, I don't I want do this movie to happen. I really don't want this scene to happen. I'm not getting in a van to drive 40 feet. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> and now I really want to get out of this van because fuck this story. She's still talking to me. Can I go to sleep while she's talking? Like that's he does all those things. He like passes out yep. in the middle of her talking. He really oh. like. That if he was like the greatest actor in the world playing that note, like be the audience, <laughs> he did it perfectly, Oscar worthy. And the story is so spectacularly boring. Uh. <laughs> She's like, you know, I was married and I was happy and everything was great in my life. And he goes, Did your husband get killed? And she goes, Worse. Worse. R worse. What it turns out was worse is that he left her and she wasn't able to see her children for a full month. That is a fate worse than death. But when she says worse, Josh Brolin goes, what's worse than? And then the yeah, camera, oh, right. <laughs> you are not going to believe this audience. You, you would not, <laughs> if we described what happened perfectly in like a computer-esque detail, like objectively perfectly, the audience would be like, no, no you're fucking <laughs> life. You're fucking life. It, he goes, what's worse than? dying and it's supposed to be a realization we'll get to that in a minute pull out 50 pins that i set for you and the camera goes not one zoom in not one zoom in like uh not two not even three four four zoom what's in what's worse than burp, 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 four zooms dying. dying and they end up on like the wrong part of his face it doesn't even no make yeah, sense. Exactly. exactly so this is supposed to be a realization but he is saying what's worse than dying. Keep in mind, he thought already that he was worse off than the dead guy. Right. So that's not a realization. You you already agreed with that. You 
You forgot, <laughs> movie. You forgot which side of that <laughs> debate you were on. It doesn't... Uh. And then the thing that she describes is just like, bad, sure, but not on the same <laughs> yeah. level. Oh, Think <laughs> this, they sat down and they were like, all right, guys, we need a woman's perspective. What's the worst thing that could happen to a woman? <laughs> and this cast came up with being married to a pastor and then not being married to a pastor. <laughs> yep, yeah. that's probably the worst thing a woman could go through. I certainly can't think of a worse thing a woman could go through. They're like, all right, we've assembled a focus group to help us with this scene. Okay, Rush Limbaugh, New Kingrich, <laughs> and uh, fucking Pastor fucking and one Matt of the Gates, nuts. Yeah, all got yeah, together. Like, what do you think's the worst thing? Well, she's married within a church, and then the guy leaves her in the Probably. church or something. They even set up a more interesting possibility and then say no. <laughs> He's like, oh, did you end up on the street? And she's like, no. No. <laughs> You're right. Oh, okay. You're right. But this is the first of a couple of the most needlessly elaborate yes, backstories. Yes. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's not so the best. Good. The fucking cop is the best by far. But yes. Oh, it's, it's so good. So weirdly. I mean, because then, like, at a certain point, he's like, wait, wait, wait. So your husband left you and you had to leave the house and you weren't able to see your children for a month. That's even in this dumbass movie universe where I can be the twice world boxing championship, that's not how <laughs> divorce works. And she's like, right, let me give you a bunch of needless detail about this that still won't make it make sense. No, you understand, Noah. You don't understand. She put everything in the name of the church. He put everything. He's like a con artist. But why did they what? pick a church guy? Right. It's a good cautionary tale of how shitty people who run churches can be. Like, honestly, yeah. I don't know why they did that. And she's like, our house was in the name of the church. Our, you know, my salary, the church. My car, the church. Our friends, the church, actually. The church owned the them. The children, the <laughs> church. <laughs> she says, she concludes, she goes, let me put it this way. I love this line oh, so gosh, much. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put it this way. I knew how he liked his eggs fixed, yep. but I didn't know how I liked mine. And then to which Josh Brolin says, what? Eggs? Wait, what do you mean? Eggs? <laughs> yeah. What are eggs? Oh, do you mean nose food? Do you mean no the things, the nose applicator that you... Uh, you mean white balls go splish splash. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I call them white balls go splish splash. It's one of the, another one of those conversational non sequiturs that I yes. highlight early on. <laughs> what? Eggs? Like, no, you know what <laughs> eggs are, dude. You're, I just want, I just want, oh, God. There's certain moments in doing theater where you witness, like high school theater, where a kid tries to play something and the director's like, dude, you know what <laughs> eggs are. You are human. Like, yeah. You've nope. lived on the planet <laughs> that has eggs on it. That's the only food we've watched you eat in this entire movie. <laughs> and we've watched you eat three times. Three times. <laughs> in fairness, the light from the eggs has been red shifted because you ate it so fast that maybe he thinks it's a different thing or maybe blue shifted, I, I guess. Is that the right oh. way? At one point during this monologue, I have to point out a plane goes by overhead and she just yells her lines <laughs> over it. So she's like, I had no friends. I had no family. <laughs> no place to go. I was. And then I sat there and I wondered. To my, I was like, fuck yeah, movie. No second takes. They had no control over this woman. She was just there to tell her story. The director's probably like, you, we can wait. We can wait until the plant. We can. She's like, no. I got to keep going. <laughs> I'm on and a roll. So, oh, here's another conversational non sequitur. Noah, I'm sure you had a fucking aneurysm when you heard this. She says. And then Malachi asked me how I like my eggs. And Josh Brolin says, you're telling me he convinced you there was a God? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what? No. Well, I, no. actually, I, I am going to tell you that it's uh, weird that you know that already. In yeah, the it's like they. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's my new thought. Here's my new thought. Uh, you know, we've, we have these theories. Maybe they were like, you know what I always heard about Shakespeare was that he only gave the actors the lines they had. <laughs> or no, he only gave the actors. Yeah, whatever. And like the, the cue line. And then that made it really good. Like they they only knew their life. They didn't know all the other lines in the show. Made it really good. Maybe they did that for this scene and he's trying to figure out where the fuck she is. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, are we? Oh, wait, he, are you telling uh, me that? Because if, yeah. if you're telling me yes, that. Yes, and then... he told you believe in God. I don't know. She's like, no, that's later on. And, and I have this whole thing. The best part is at the end of this scene, he goes, wait, wait, wait. 
how do you like your eggs? And she says, and I will think about this every day until my heart explodes. <laughs> yep. Scrambled, of course. Why, of course? Why? Of course. Of co- I need because to know, of course. Because in the story, her maybe radiation got her, like she can't have children. I, I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Scrambled, of course. I don't. I think, honestly, and maybe I'm giving this writer way too much credit, and that seems real easy. It was scrambled because her life was all scrambled up and his life is all scrambled up. And sometimes when you mix it all together and then what comes out at the end is is tasty. OK, that's so much better. I hope <laughs> I think I, I, I don't think, you know, come on, let, let's face it. I think they probably had a dream one time that they think we might know about. Or yep. something, but, yeah, this, you know. this movie was narrated into an iPhone's notes app. I think I think that's the best we're gonna get. Scrambled, of course. Yeah, it is unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, so Malachi gets there to open up the ghost diner. She leaves. He's like, do you want to come in and have eggs? Because we've been sitting together outside of a diner for a while and everything. I'm pretty sure you're the love interest at this point. I, I don't know. And she's like, no, the whole dynamic would be fucked up if I was also there in the next scene. I'd just kind of be sitting there. Yeah. It'd be weird. Well, and they're like, no, I'm still alive. I mean, <laughs> we're all alive in this <laughs> diner. You also were. Because you we, haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> audience. <laughs> right. And so Sonny's like, you know, Sonny's still like bummed about how terrible his life's going. And Malachi starts going like, you know, you worry about money an awful lot. And I'm like, he's fucking homeless. <laughs> oh, God damn, of course. All the homeless people worry about money a lot. Oh, Jesus. homeless people. You people love real estate. I don't have a house. <laughs> house this. Home this. Crazy. And then, now, again, it was physically impossible to pay attention to this movie. OK, <laughs> yes, but really was. I did black out. And when I came to, I believe Malachi was using destroying an anthill as a positive example. Yes. for God. Yes. <laughs> well, he and, yes. And he introduces it with he says, you don't think God exists. And then we get the guy, I guess, in this sentence saying, yeah, on this particular dependent clause agreeing. that <laughs> Yes, there is no God. And then he asks. How many times does God say he'll leave you in the place in a place to which you would respond? You're asking me, what did the thing I don't think exists say? I don't fucking know. Right. It, it doesn't exist. What do you mean? It said nothing about That's anything. Not a resp- <laughs> I don't believe in this thing. Oh, yeah. Well, what did it say when it? No, I do, you <laughs> don't it, understand. I don't believe in the thing. It's yeah. not, Describe it's not it real. to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What <laughs> color are the thing you don't exist? Don't think exists eyes then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but then his example is so fucking stupid. He's like, OK, so, you know, how you're walking along a sidewalk and you see an <laughs> ant hill on it and you'll think fuck those ants they have not suffered enough yet i will destroy what they have created and he's like yeah no we all do that of Everybody, course absolutely <laughs> yeah this is a good relatable metaphor this is a great metaphor <laughs> you know how we abuse every animal and uh, you know any life and we like to torture things i am yeah. sold right now about torturing random animals okay, t- every time i get a chance I'm torturing yeah. ants yeah right and and his point is you know how like when you kick over an ant hill the ants just get right back to work building it. He's like, yeah, because they have no ability to think. Yeah, exactly. He's like, well, they're ants. So, and Malachi's like, well, what does that say about us? Essentially, I'm like, I don't, they're ants. They're not us. You wish we that we're smarter didn't think so ants. <laughs> God thinks of us as ants to torture at will and without thought. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And we should gladly accept it and rebuild our anthill over and over. And as though Malachi realized the sentence he just said, he then abruptly stands up and goes, would you like to have a scene with a different character? I just realized that there's... Literally no set of sentences that make the metaphor I just played out make sense. Yeah. Steve gave us a hundred bucks so he could pretend to be blind. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Billy, the blind character, is written like someone has had blindness described to them in yeah. a different language for the very first time. <laughs> and that person is seven. I yeah, mean, yeah. I would do this as a kid with my siblings. Where you go, oh, you pretend you can't see. And then you're like, 
Where is everyone? Yes. I don't know where you are. Right, you know, right. Like, he, like, yeah, he's not... talking to a guy. He can obviously hear the guy, and then he goes to shake his hand, and he reaches behind himself, like, you know, like, are you over here? Inside his own, he fists himself and is like, are you inside? <laughs> also, and I, I'm not going to point it out every time through the conversation. Every time there is a pause in the conversation, the Billy character, this blind character, will be like, did you walk away? Did you run away? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? I'm blind and I can't tell. <laughs> what room am I in? I forgot. Where am I? I forgot. I don't remember. I can't see it. I don't remember where I am. Look, we, I know we have some visually impaired listeners. If you do not do that to fuck with people from now on, <laughs> you absolutely should. If you're having a boring conversation or like a hard relationship talk, just the minute there's a pause. Did you leave? Did you backflip out of the room? <laughs> I am blind after all. I have no idea where anyone is at any given moment. <laughs> oh, God. It's, yeah, they always say, you know, like your other sh senses get sharpened if you lose, you know, a, a, some sort of, uh, ability in in one of your senses. This guy has no other senses. No. Yeah, yeah. He had the one, and now that's a, the script says it's gone. So he's like, I could be floating in space, or I could be outside <laughs> or inside. I don't know. No idea. So all right. So but then Billy starts to tell him his backstory, and his backstory is the silliest seven year old trying to come up with something on the spot bullshit you can possibly imagine. It's so fucking stupid. He? <laughs> yeah, please, please, Eli, please tell us Billy's backstory. <laughs> he was the number one pick in the NFL, like so many white gentlemen before him. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, he was also going to win the Heisman because those two yep. things so often yeah. coincide. Yep. Yeah, in fairness, he could have been a really good quarterback that won the Heisman. Yeah, it's, 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 it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. But yeah. I love that he has to he has to point out though. He's like, oh, by the way, I wasn't blind at that time though. I wasn't a blind quarterback. Yeah. Though. yeah. <laughs> Because Sonny is like in shock. He's like, a blind quarterback. Did you, use, <laughs> did you have a team of trained bats who squeaked at you where the ball needed to go? He's like, no, man, I wasn't blind. Man. Oh, okay. I thought you were some kind of, because I don't know if you ever seen the gambit. He could throw the playing cards. I thought maybe he was like him. And then Daredevil. the movie, th okay, I can't help it. The I'm more, this, this is very problematic sports misunderstanding, actually. Because he says, I never had anything worse than a sprained ankle. Because he's setting up that yeah. he had like an accident mm -hmm. and that's why he's like, he said, you know, since I was six, I played Pop Warner or whatever. Never had anything worse than a sprained ankle. And Josh Brolin says, oh, you were pretty lucky, huh? And he goes, lucky? No, I had a gift. A gift at Which not I getting... guess was not getting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, does this movie think that you the people who get hurt in football weren't good enough? Like, is that what kind of fucking warped ass Christian worldview, like meritocracy worldview is this? The people who get slammed, you know, blindside hit in football and get a concussion. They weren't good enough. They just weren't skilled enough. Well, they, to not... they probably deserved it for something. They well, or yeah. God had a better plan for. Got to practice a little harder. So and, and it's so fucking bizarre. The movie goes so far out of its way to create a convoluted thing to happen to him instead of him getting hurt when he plays. He's like, I got hurt in a terrible accident. It had nothing to do with football. Way safer than people say it is. That concussion shit, bullshit. Yeah, concussions aren't even real. Not even a thing. Not even really a thing. No, it was a drunk driver that hit my car, killed my two friends, and blinded me. If anything, the message to for the movie, for like the Christian moviegoers is anything he did outside of football was the threat. Like he was in God's plan when he played right. football, a violent sport that is killing, like honestly causing a ton of brain damage yeah. and, and, and harmful effects. But no, like it's like, no, I should have been asleep. You know, because I had practice next day, but instead I went out with my friends. Yep. And that's the bad thing that he did. Yeah. And Sonny points out here, he's like, okay, well, the whole point of this movie is to convince me to believe in God. You getting blinded in a freak car accident is an obvious example against God. Yeah. And Billy's like, gay marriage. <laughs> Well, so, what's so fucked up is that Billy's like, well, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, there were three people in the car and I'm the only one that even survived. And Sonny is like, well, yeah, but blind is so much worse than dead, right? Like, wouldn't you rather, aren't you, didn't, when you, don't you wish that you got to be one of the dead ones? No? 
<laughs> yeah, he chal- he questions whether or not God exists or whatever. And and the not at all blind frat bro's answer is, like I said, I'm still here. Which I guess means fuck your dead friends. Right, like yep. they, yes. <laughs> how solipsistic is that? No, I believe in God because I'm still here, but he killed other people. Right. So they don't matter. To, to teach me a lesson, apparently. <laughs> and then to wrap up his story, he explains that the drunk driver who hits him is in prison mm-hmm. and calls him once a week to say he's sorry. You would think at a certain point that would get boring, right? Get old, yep. right? <laughs> so. Which, by the way, the point is supposed to be that it's worse to be that guy alive than it is to be dead. Something the main character already agreed to right. in the beginning. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's you. That's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then Billy has to go because his scene is over now, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Kane space work. So fantastic. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> he whips out the visually impaired cane. He's swinging it over his head. He's sword fighting with it. He's doing that yeah. thing that sighted actors do where they slap like every, not just like down on the yep. ground, but they're yep. like going yep. up and down surfaces. <laughs> yeah. First step of being blind and checking with a stick is, is there anything seven feet diagonally to my <laughs> upper right? Check right. up there. Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's like a booby trap or something. I don't a know. Dart that might fire yeah so (laughs) (laughs) so he goes back to the other table i also want to point out that we're going to learn later that all these characters are dead he's he's (laughs) but not him well but yeah right no no he's not dead i was gonna say that same thing you fucking you fucked up your metaphysics you specific you had the lady not come in because there's a ghost diner but then this guy just comes in and he gets to be alive right right fuck you no (laughs) you're right none of it adds up ultimately all right so he goes back to the other table where a Apparently his breakfast was waiting <laughs> and Malachi is like, see, blind guy could be worse. And he's like, mm, yeah, but, you know, this whole idea that there's a loving God in the world kind of th- doesn't the existence of people who have it even worse than me, like undercut your argument a bit. Uh, <laughs> B- Billy has won <laughs> Grammys and Academy Awards for his music. Since he went, oh my God, as if this character wasn't already dumb enough, it turns out that after going blind and losing his chance at being the first round draft pick for the NFL, he became a musician who's won Grammys and Academy Awards. Yeah. Why? Why? Okay, here's the question. <laughs> Do they think an Academy Award is something you get for music. Yes, I know they do give an Academy Award, but do the people who made this... Well, I think the people who made this thought they were getting an Academy Award for the music. Yeah. Okay. Are you saying the people who made this think he won it for acting as well? Like he's Yeah, also it's unclear what they think unclear. he won yeah, that yeah. for. So, so they say that he wrote the soundtrack for some movie or something, but my question is, why create that weird extra convoluted step into your thing? Just make him a Grammy winner. It's already silly enough. <laughs> why? Mm-hmm. There's so many moments in here that are so obviously written by a child, right? Where he's like, and then, and then, now he's a spider. He got turned into a spider <laughs> wherever he, he wants. He also fights crime at night because <laughs> yeah, right. he turns out that he can sense, oh shit, I'm doing it. And, my, no, and no. my friend Kyle. He got his law degree. When, oh no. My friend Kyle, he said, he said that at his birthday, Spider-Man was there. So, <laughs> Are you Christian yet? <laughs> Oh, it's so fucking silly. So then, yeah, he's like, no, you thought he was, you thought everything was bad for him just because he's blind, but it turns out he's a great blind musician. So everything's better for him. He's like, well, you know, he still probably would trade that for um, sight. I'm just guessing. And then Malachi busts out some clothes. He's like, hey, man, I bought you some new clothes. Now, uh, spoiler alert, we'll eventually learn that Malachi doesn't exist and he's like an angel. Are these angels, like, 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 is Sonny naked from this point out in the movie? Oh, that's so much better. I was just picturing, like, an angelic 12-mouthed Gideon of the Lord walking around an outlet mall being like, <laughs> he's like an 18 by 13. <laughs> you got to be tall and skinny or short and fat. They got nothing in the middle. I <laughs> love the stuff. I love the stuff that bad actors accidentally signal. It's my favorite thing because what happens is he says, I, I bought you clothes. 
Josh Brolin gives a puzzled look and then the black guy leans in and goes, I guessed at your size. <laughs> You're like, what is that signaling? What do you, what is, like if a human leaned in and was like, I guessed at your size. Do you like... You're talking about you, my penis, right? About, yes, this is like this yeah, like you have to be. My penis, a, right? <laughs> but he's not. We know he's an angel. So that's supposed to... In his mind, what does that mean? Is what I want to know. Exactly. Oh, great question. And he's like, hey, man, can I can I like do some work to pay for all this food and these clothes and stuff? And he's like, no, nah, it's angelic stuff doesn't even really exist. You're going to be naked for the rest of the movie. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if you read the second chapter of my stupid book, that'll be payment enough. Yeah. Read, write your book. Read the second. <laughs> I was going to say, read the second chapter of the journal you're writing. Yeah. In, <laughs> exactly. And plus all the stuff you've already written. Read that again, too. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Just when we thought this movie had nothing to offer, we got a blind first round draft pick Grammy and Oscar winning quarterback. <laughs> and it turns out that is not even close to the dumbest turn this movie is going to take. So uh -uh. we're going to take a quick break. And I actually feel like I've already given Act 3 the hard sell, but I'm going to do the question thing anyway, because that's the format. Will Malachi turn out to be an angel? Will all the diner guests, except for that quarterback guy, turn out to be heaven ghosts? <laughs> Does the writer understand that reveals are supposed to both come as a surprise and make the story make more sense? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the delightfully unhinged conclusion of Psalm 54, Where Are You? <laughs> Hello. I'm so sorry, man. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Ah, oh, it's bad. It's bad because I crashed my car into your eyeballs. I know you did, man. And now, now you can't see. Right. You know, you can actually. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Same time next week? Yep. Talk to you then. I love you. Oh, I must have hung up. No, man. Still here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Yeah, man. Come on. I'm missing OA. I can just tell you what happens. No, I'd like to. Guys, what, what, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. We're just taping my wireless earbuds into my skull. Okay, why? Uh, So I can listen to my favorite podcasts. Well, no, I mean, why, why, why do you need to tape them into your skull? Oh, I got one of those super duper cheap pairs and they don't stay in or fit right. So little Mr. Tapey tape. And I was just excited to wrap his head in tape. Yeah, no, that tracks. That tracks. But Eli, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, why not just treat yourself to a set of Raycon wireless earbuds? What are Raycon wireless earbuds? Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. No dangling wires or stems to get in your way here. Raycons come in a range of stylish colors, but always with a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. And with enough battery life for six hours of playtime, you can unplug for a while. The best part, Raycon makes great sound accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of the other premium audio brands. Wow, that does sound good. Oh, they are. Raycon sent us a pair to try, and they're so comfortable, and the sound quality is so good that our wives stole them. Thus the tape. Ah, uh, got it. And right now, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for GAM listeners, and here's what you got to do to get it. You just go to buyraycon.com slash GAM. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash GAM. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, no, I'm in. Hey, Raycon doesn't sell underwear by any chance, do they? I, I don't I don't think so. Why? Okay, so Thomas, we can leave that tape on. Okay. What? I said Raycons are a good product. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're gonna rejoin Sonny heading back to the church shelter while someone aggressively bleats amazing grace at us. Oh god. Okay. This is a goat. It is a goat. <laughs> it is a goat. It's a that learned yoga goat. And you'd be impressed if this was a goat, yeah. right? You'd be like, that's pretty good for a goat. Show us the goat. Like, yeah, show it. If someone was like, man, 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 I don't have no idea how you even started <laughs> training that. <goat. laughs> well, and that's the fucked up thing is that, okay, in my opinion, Amazing Grace is amongst the most beautiful pieces of music ever fucking written. It's so hard to make that into a bad piece of music, but they managed it for they this. They fucking soundtrack. nailed it. <laughs> they fucking did it. 
by the way, unless it is a goat, then it fucking rules. Like, show me well, the goat. Well, yeah, is no, what exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, Goats exactly. are GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's heading back to the homeless shelter, and on the way, he runs into another homeless guy because this upper-middle-class suburb is filled with homeless people. <laughs> yeah, a perfectly clean, teeth-are-great, well-groomed homeless guy. Another one of those, mm -hmm. yep. Yep, and so, his, so he... Like physically, they run into each other because this this movie doesn't understand what running into somebody means. And he's like, hey, man, where are you going, fellow homeless person? And he goes, <laughs> oh, they're running me off. They won't let me stay here. He's like, that's so weird because it's uh. a homeless shelter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. They spend a dozen minutes on this comedy beat. Was there a comedy beat? Yeah, because he's like. Yeah, man, I was sleeping out back and the guy came over and he was like, you should move aside. And he's like, you sure he didn't mean inside? But like, That would have made it more clear. If that was a comedy beat, his response should be, I mean, one, no, I think I heard what I heard. Or two, yeah. if he was inviting me inside, why didn't he say anything except that one sentence? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why didn't he say, as I started storming off, I was offering you a place to stay? <laughs> so dumb. No. But the, so the two of them get to talk and he's like, well, do you want to hang out and tell me your weirdly convoluted backstory? Oh, do I? He's like, well, you want to hear my backstory? Yeah, I do. Ooh, deep breath, deep inhale. Okay. <laughs> We've we got to outdo rule of threes. Like this one yeah, right? yeah, has exactly. to outdo the last two. This is the most needlessly elaborate backstory. It's so, <laughs> so weird. Good. All they need, reminder, all they need is character is down on his luck. Yep. That's like all That's the, it. the script note be like, guy has bad things happen. And they're like, okay, so here I was <laughs> meeting my ex at Nakatomi Plaza, right? And, all right? How much do you know about Hans Gruber? Do I need to explain? It's just so fucking ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> He says, starts with, I was a cop. And I'm already like, no, you weren't. You were less nope, of a cop was, than that bro was blind. You were le that's not what you were. He, oh. he was an undercover cop that had to do the junk so that he could fit in on the junk scene. Oh, and then he got God. all messed up on the junk. Oh, it's, and, and it keeps going. That's not it. No, exactly. It oh. just keeps going and going and going. It's like it was I, a turf war. See, the fifth precinct. They got the, you're like, fucking what? I don't. And also, by then, my mother was very, very deep into her lung cancer. <laughs> which, it, what, it, why is any of this? <laughs> I wrote my notes too. I was like, is this how the screenwriter thinks people become homeless? He's just walking through New York City. And he's like, yeah, that guy was probably an undercover cop. That guy there, champion boxer. Wait, <laughs> I'm not done with the story. It keeps going. <laughs> like, a, and he's like, because you thought, okay, you got to stop. You thought it was going to end. You're like, oh, you had to do drugs to go undercover. Therefore, you got addicted. Nope. 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 We need a few more steps. <laughs> We're not there yet in this Rube Goldberg it backstory. Out that there There's was also <laughs> the rival gang, I think, had another cop that was in it, but he wasn't. <laughs> Just Again, it's a child. It's a child telling the story, is. right? It I is. got addicted <laughs> to the drugs, but no, I didn't. So then there was a bad cop and I killed him. It was. It starts to turn into the Departed at a certain point, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. it is the Departed. <laughs> yes. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> he just describes. The, I made the fucking diehard joke. I should have done Departed. You're right. That's way better. <laughs> and then Mark Wahlberg. He showed up in my apartment and he was all covered in plastic. <laughs> I will say this though: if his story had ended in, so you want to smoke some crack? I would have been like, okay, that's a great comedy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, Jesus. Yeah. So there was a bad cop that got killed during a shootout. And but nobody knew he was a bad cop except for this guy. So then he got blamed for the other <laughs> cop getting killed. It's so weird. And again, none it's of so it. All we it need does not matter. Is that the guy is homeless. All it has to be is like, ah, oh, fucking got laid off, downsizing. <laughs> End of scene. That's it. End of scene. They got to the end of this movie and it's like, well, this is only a 70 minute movie. 
shit. We wanted to go for an hour 39. <laughs> well, 29 minutes of cop backstory. All right. That's okay. <laughs> There's two rival gangs, right? They control the docks, but they control the... <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Hey, Dave, you know that cop movie you're always pitching us that is confusing, <laughs> boring, and terrible? Would you be willing to say that as a first-person monologue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, but... And, and, and you thought, ladies and gentlemen listening at home, that that was the dumbest part of this scene, but it absolutely is not, because he's like... You know, and and, the, and then I lost my job and now I'm homeless because of the turf war and the bad cop and the plot of The Departed and Mark Wahlberg and everything. The llama. And the, exactly. And a goat was singing Amazing Grace. It was really weird. And he says, and it's all because there is no God and I hate God that there isn't. And then Sonny says, I don't know about that. I've been thinking more <laughs> and more about this God stuff. And I'm thinking maybe God's just mad at us for taking prayer out of schools. What? <laughs> he says, hold on. He says, no, no, he doesn't just say that. He says, do you remember how we used to say the Lord's Prayer in school and then one guy got offended, so we stopped? To which Bruce Willis in Die Hard or yeah. <laughs> Matt, whoever, you know, fucking Leo DiCaprio is like, yeah, I do remember that thing that, that didn't fucking happen. That, yes, I do remember that. It, we, okay, so the, the thing that they're talking about happening, which of course they get completely goddamn wrong, what they're talking about happened in 1962. Yep. <laughs> These characters would have to be in their 70s. The whole argument, the only way this whole argument works is if everything now is worse than it ever was. Let me just, hold on, I'm going to grab a history book. One sec. I just want to see. Is now worse? Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Steven Pinker. The history book just ate me. Like it came to life and just ate me and I'm dead now. So the, the answer is no, it's not worse than ever Christ. right now. God, Sonny just goes on a tirade about how bad politically correctness is. He's like, he's like, we're so worried about offending people, but we're not a worried if we're offending God. And it's like, yeah, because the people exist in the Are world real. and yeah. tell I am you more concerned with think, real I, people's feelings <laughs> than fake things. Feelings. Am That's I? true. I'm not offended. I'm not worried about like, am I going to offend my TV remote if I turn my yeah, TV right. off? No, it doesn't have feelings. <laughs> exactly. I didn't even and ask. your TV remote exists. <laughs> That's a thing in the world. That would make more sense than being worried about offending God. And then, because apparently that argument wasn't stupid enough, he is, in four perfect sentences, going to prove himself wrong and end the scene. Yes. <laughs> Let me give you those sentences. He would say, Yep, yep, please. Maybe God is like a boxing trainer. When I was training at boxing, my trainer worked me hard and I hated him for it. If my trainer had told me I was going to be a champion, I would have worked much harder. God should tell us, fuck. <laughs> 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 yeah, one of them, yeah, they, they kind of come to the realization together. He's like, so what you're saying is, had you known, uh-huh, uh, no, oh. um, oh. scene, end, shit, end. Shit, cut, shit. cut, I Can think, we? I think cut. Can I retro, cut. retro cut, retro Wait, cut. what if I invented a third cop that was also undercut? <laughs> <laughs> and that cop was Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the chief was on the take as well. <laughs> oh, God. 30 pieces of silver they offered him, yeah. <laughs> this, this lady sold her baby to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. Okay, that turned, then it's the best movie ever. <laughs> but, uh, then we had to pull over the baby. If this uh, is a cop fucking... rock prequel, there we go, yeah. And, okay, so then he gets done with this conversation. We see him, he's at the diner. I guess he broke in on his own this time. Yes! <laughs> You've gone to great pains, movie, to set up that Malachi has, specifically has to do a magic trick yes. to open the back door because he's an angel and we haven't caught on yet because we're not smart enough to catch up with your movie. And then this scene, they're like, fuck all that. Hey, uh, I just let myself in. <laughs> yes, there is... Literally nothing this movie sets up that it does not stumble across like a toddler alone in a bowling alley. <laughs> well, yeah. So he's like, he's like, hey, and by the way, I can pay for my own food this time because I found this morning when I woke up, there was an envelope with $11 under my door. And it's like, really, will we ever explain where that come from or why? He's like, nope, sure will not. He's like, will it ever be important that you have it? He's like, nope, sure will not. 
I think he must have blown the undercover cop or something. <laughs> <laughs> the only way it makes sense. You know what? I did sell that crack after we talked last <laughs> night. And now it's time for the breakfast <laughs> metaphor. So oh, no. Maybe you've been having a hard time following along with Malachi's <laughs> message. <laughs> So he has a fun little prank that he sets up with the cook. So he's been giving him breakfast and then he brings out Ugh. uncooked bacon and raw eggs. Oh no. Oh, fucking A. And you I'm get just it? like, just skip to whatever the fucking stupid <laughs> life lesson is. I don't want to go through the process of the actor <laughs> pretending that what more looking at his coffee cup. That's not what coffee looks like. Normally coffee is not dust. It's and then wet. eggs are cooked so, normally. <laughs> right. God. And he has to go through each thing, each, each item thing. on the fucking plate. Wait, is this big? <laughs> Bacon. Well, maybe the bacon will be fine. Nope, the bacon nope. isn't cooked either. Damn. <laughs> okay, the <laughs> eggs look like they're still circles, but I should check <laughs> and announce it out loud. Like, I can't get those in my nose like that. <laughs> What do I look like? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Come on. <laughs> and by the way, this prank smorgasbord was to prove the point God's not done yet. Yeah. Yep. yep you're still being cooked. <laughs> Also, by the way, he like totally manhandled a bunch of raw food ingredients. Like, not a good move, you know? Like, I want yeah. to get food poisoning in a minute. Just like <laughs> right. fucking projectile barf and diarrhea all over the thing. Malachi's like, you know, on second thought, I probably should have found a different way to teach that lesson. I probably could have at least told you to wash your hands after you manhandled that bacon before you ate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. And mind blown, everybody, because the lesson here, I this mm -hmm. I changed my life, by the way, like for the oh, better mm -hmm. after seeing this movie. The lesson is things are sometimes not better until some time or something happens. And then they are. God is real. Yeah. Because things take time. Because sometimes things are bad before they're better than bad. Look, the fact that nothing has ever ended badly in all of history is very fortunate for these Christian <laughs> apologetics, right? And I'd be like, what about the fact that my body used to be good because I was younger and now it fucking sucks because I'm getting older. Oh, that doesn't well, count. Because Sorry. most <laughs> millionaires, I don't know if you know this their not, bodies Thomas, but over the age of 60. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm like, you know, boy, it, you know, it, it's almost like this movie was written by somebody who's never heard of survivorship bias. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'd be you like know, counter example, Malachi. Um, there was a period of time when my neck didn't hurt all the fucking time. <laughs> and now my neck hurts all the time. It never ends. And that's just how it's going to be for the rest of my life. Like the doctor's like, yeah, yep, you just, just that's, that's your neck now. now. Have yep. you tried CBD? Malachi, that's one study. <laughs> Come on, Malachi. <laughs> All right. So Malachi has to walk over to talk to another one of his ghost customers. And he's like, um, <laughs> he's like, hey, do you want to talk to this um, this Hispanic lady? And he goes like, not Really, man. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm just sitting here getting ready for whatever this story is going to be. Like. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so it I'm an undercover when I cop, the leader of the cartel, and then we came <laughs> over here in a tunnel, and I'm just I'm going off like there's this has got to I'll do everything else, you know. This is when I invent the game Connect Four, my friend. Then and only then. Have you heard of the chupacabra? And well, <laughs> to be fair, this woman's story is crazier and dumber it is. if if we take it holistically it is crazier and dumber yep, yep. Oh. and by the way they couldn't find a single native spanish speaker for this movie no, no. in in the united states of fucking america <laughs> in florida we're told it's in florida but they have the scene in spanish anyways yeah and there's no reason for that nope the only possible reason for that is one, this is the Spanish teacher at the local high school who was like, I want to be able to show this to my students. <laughs> or two, they were like, shit, hour and 37 minutes. We really need that extra minute. Hey, we can double every line in the scene if they have to translate it through a pale faced nothing boy. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so she's, she's Miss Maria and she wants... Sonny, to go visit her family in Orlando, it's very important that she go visit the family. And she hands him, she's like, here's a little note that I have already written my daughter's name and address on. 
in case, you know, she needs to get laid, I guess. <laughs> and the movie is like, just in case you didn't already fucking get this, we wouldn't want there to be any moment of mystery or tension. <laughs> We're just going to literally write down and tell you wh that it's Chewie's mom. Like, yeah, right. Or that, whatever. Yeah, exactly. That is, it's the boxer that he killed in the ring at the beginning. That's his wife's mom, his wife's dead mom. Anyway, yeah. Or his dead mom. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right. And I know it's just a tiny moment, but they do that revelation and then they figure out the time for two minutes. So it's like, <laughs> yep, controller, your chewy controllers, mom. <laughs> Jace. So like eight, eight thirty. What's good for you? No, we actually get a. We, would it be too early? <laughs> well, I think his son has soccer. So, uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, all right. So like eleven is still morning. Literally I just post revelation. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What day of the week is it? I'm in. I'm in ghost prison. What day? What day is it? I'm a ghost. So okay. So he has to go to Orlando. He takes a cab to this guy's house. Now, I'm sorry. I lived in Orlando for a while because this. So this is amazing to me. He takes a cab. He pulls up at this guy's house. And the cab driver says, that'll be $10. $10. Okay. I looked it up. That will get you 2.87 miles. $10. <laughs> $10. There is no taxi. If you get no, in a taxi no. and then get out the other door just to move the four feet, they're like, that'll be $12. That'll be $15. Right. Okay. But this just enlightened in me a new fan theory this movie, based on the timing, Lord's Prayer, this movie was written by a Victorian ghost on a penny farthing. <laughs> yeah. You remember Ghost Rider? They hired oh, like an, yeah. a too Ooh. old, they summoned the wrong ghost, yeah. right? And he was like, Nickabuckers, Octoroon. And they were like, shit, well, we already summoned a ghost. Will you write us a movie about the modern day based on guesses that you have in that Windows 95 computer? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. This yes. is a great movie if all you have to go off is word art in, in the computer yeah. that you're temporarily possessing as Ghostwriter. But I, I do have to say, it was incredible to discover that daytime exists in this yes. movie's universe. Right? This is the first yep. and only, well, except for a tiny one we'll get to, first and only depiction of daylight. And I, I imagine the sun must have sued the pants off them, you know, because the, they're like, no, 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 no. And they're like, but Florida, maybe the angle is, I don't know. Try some argument. <laughs> so, yeah, so he shows up. Now he's at the he's at the home of the boxer that he killed. Now, apparently, OK, first of all, these people are supposed to be gazillionaires, right? Because he was a gazillionaire and they got all his money. Mm -hmm. They're in a tiny little house and he shows up and he's like. So I hear you're single and have a thing for boxers. No, you know what? No, you know, I, I, I should have thought that. Through. Let me start again. Let me come back in. I'm going to come back in. I don't know. We need Eli to do this. I don't know that I can even be a part of talking about this scene because the wife, the, the widow, <laughs> the widow, the, the victims, the murder victims family. The wife is a robot. She is <laughs> actually an android. And if the movie went in that direction, it would have fucking ruled. Okay, that does a pin in that because that is going to explain a hug in about four minutes in the movie that is, I will say it, the most baffling part of the film. It is, oh. right, right. So, so he goes inside this dude's house. The wife says, Gregory, come meet the man that punched your dad to death, right? Yep. And the kid is psyched. He's yes. like, yep. yay! Oh, can I get you some lemonade? And he runs out to go like, oh, I get you some cookies and lemonade. Thanks for murdering my dad. He's like, you, yep. you can't imagine how many times I wanted to punch my dad to death. Oh, man. <laughs> the kid has never been happier. Yep. He's so glad his dad is gone. Oh, he's been over the fucking moon this past six yeah. months of not having a dad. And the wife is too. The wife is like, I'm so glad to see you. You are, she <laughs> comes and she's like, you are my favorite person on the earth. <laughs> I love you hero. so much. Can we get him a drink, son? Get him a drink and do you, can, take our dog. You can have our possessions. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. It's fucking weird. It's so weird. Right. But as Thomas has pointed out, the, while those are the lines, her affectation is like this. We have looked forward to meet you for so long. Like yeah. if the walls had opened and a cult in dark robes were yes. standing there yeah. and they lay him on an altar and cut him open at the end, I'd be like, oh, okay. No, <laughs> here's, that's good. Here was my pitch. Here's my pitch for you guys. I wish people could see, it's almost worth, watch the YouTube video of this scene. 
the way she delivers it, if she was like, son, go get our guest some lemonade because she's a robot. If the son went in and it's really all an act, because she starts fucking sucking his dick. She, she's just like, we are so glad that you killed our husband. And I am, and you're like, I'm baffled. I'm like, what in the fuck is happening? If the son was going to load a shotgun and yes. then come back yes. and just kill him, like right. it's all an act. Right. And then it's a Tarantino movie and it's fucking brilliant. I'm telling you. Right. I thought the same because at the end of this scene, they blindfold him and drive him away. And I'm like, okay, they're going to take him to a cornfield. All yeah. of Hector's family is going to be there to beat him <laughs> to death. <laughs> right? That, that's perfect. What, that's how it's acted. And Malachi is standing there with the baseball bat going like, you didn't know he was my brother, did you? You know, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. the whole thing was, oh, and then the lady, the, uh, the the lady who got him in the van, that turns out to be like, you know, Hector's ex-girlfriend. There's a, yeah, right, right. It all makes sense then, but no. The, the mom is like, I'm not actually a ghost. I yeah. pretend <laughs> right. to be a ghost. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense of this delivery that is fucking un real. I, yeah. It is, oh my God, it's unreal. We could not possibly express how ridiculous nope. and unhuman these people's reactions are. All right, so she's telling this story. Okay, this story is so good. Of all the convoluted oh. stupid backstories that we get. That it's, it's the best. <laughs> it is the best. <laughs> she comes in, she goes, okay, so it turns out you were doing us such a huge favor when you punched my husband to death. He had leukemia and needed a good punching to death. He not not just needed a good punching to death. He planned yes. for you to punch him. Yes. He lied. Yep. He cheated. He assumed he had leukemia and then tricked you into murdering him. And mind you, she reads this as though she's a, like a newscaster on the BBC International. She I wrote down a quote during the routine exam with our family doctor. They discovered the high white blood cell count. You're like, what the, are you reporting to me? What the, f during the routine exam yeah. with our family <laughs> physician, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so weird. It only works if the son is loading that fucking shotgun. The son's like, yeah, buy me, buy me a few more seconds, mom. Yeah, yeah keep yeah, going yeah, with okay. whatever. A lot of detail, a lot of detail, mom. Up. Weird, yeah. meaningless detail, yes. Oh, I'm a kid. I can't get the gun working. You know, Tarantino <laughs> would have like the tension of, oh, how does, oh, which way does the shell, go? oh, fucking, no, keep going, make something, you know, he's giving her the like, keep going. Uh, a routine, uh, yes, yeah, leukemia inspection is how we, the, yeah. you wonder. You're probably wondering how he set himself up financially post the leukemia diagnosis. <laughs> but okay, but here's the thing, though. That's not where the story's going. Where the story's going instead, and please, somebody take me there, is that Hector, upon realizing that he had leukemia and that it was gonna, the treatment was going to bankrupt his family and he was going to die anyway, realized that he could get more money by getting killed in the ring. Yep. So he intentionally died from a punch to the chin. How does yeah. one do that? <laughs> yeah, I really want to be there while he plans this with his doctor. <laughs> Okay, Doc, give it to me straight. Well, Mr. Boxerino, you have an elevated white blood cell count. Leukemia. I knew it. Uh, I mean, that's a possibility, but we'll, we'll need to run more tests. Punch to death. Sorry, what? It's the only way for my family, Doc. I gotta get in the ring and get punched to death. Uh, I mean, even if you had leukemia, you shouldn't do that, but you don't know. Oh, I've got whether... leukemia. All right. Hey, Doc. I need you to punch me. I need you to punch me as hard as you can. I'm not going to do that. Look, look how open my chin is, though. I'm a doctor. Curse you, leukemia! Okay. Well, but yes, uh, yes, it's got to be. It, nothing makes sense in this entire fucking movie unless there's like he's unless he gives him. Like, he's like, hey, man, is there any kind of, like, ampule you can put in my chin that will replace a untraceable death <laughs> poison as soon as I get punched right here? Yeah, did he, like, tap his skull with a hammer until it had, like, a few cracks on it? Yeah. That's, that's good. That's ready. Ready to go. I uh, tried to get a cyanide capsule from my dentist, but uh, they don't do those. That's just for movies. <laughs> you know, they give those to the astronauts, too. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. doing a side thing. And then, and then, with the knowledge that he, the plan was for him to murder a man to death all along, he gives this big fucking sloppy ass hug to this woman. And truly, this woman has either 
never been hugged before and is unaware of the custom of hugging or two desperately does not want to be hugged by this actor. <laughs> she's not a human being. She is a robot. I, right, I right. firmly she's, believe yeah. she's an android. There's no, she no is way. not a pleasure model and that's why she doesn't know how to hug. <laughs> <laughs> and also, by the way, I have to point this out and I'm sure that Thomas noticed this too. They're wearing their microphones. Oh, we're, oh! Did with, we get this? The, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. They, she hugs yeah. him. He's got a, like a fucking microphone, like on his shirt or something. I may have mistaken that for the overly ambitious Foley guy. Like I thought it was, or it, it could be like the Foley guy's like, oh, what's the sound of some fucking fabric rubbing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, all right. So and then so she hugs him. The 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 kid comes up to hug him as well. The guy who murdered his dad. Yes, yes, that's yep. the kid. And now they they have a surprise to show him. So they drive him somewhere blindfolded. Again, they're not going off to kill him, right? Like this movie had one last chance to make some amount of it's sense. It's so much better. Everyone, Malachi was in on it. Everybody yeah. was in on it. It's all about just fucking killing this guy. And then she has to rip her face off and be like, I was a fembot all along. <laughs> you know, right. The only way her <laughs> performance makes any sense. All right. So, so, but yeah, but no, instead he gets out. Of course, he's got the fucking blindfold on and he's so damn dumb that he's got to go like, I don't know how I'll see what it is if I have this yeah. blindfold on. Are you still there? Yeah. Are you all gone? Meanwhile, the son's like, the wife's like, get the wood chipper going. <laughs> yeah, right, just, right. uh, it's a boxing gym that we're going <laughs> to try to fucking pull start it. But yeah, but no, instead of that, they've used the prize money, the, the, the money that they got from, I guess, his purse to build a gym called Chewy's Gym. Yep. In the middle of nowhere, and they want Sonny to run the gym. Yep. Okay, so wait. Is the plot of this movie, because this is what I've been led to believe as a Christian, the plot of this movie is that a man realizes he has leukemia, so he sets mm -hmm. himself up to die in the ring because yep. he knows that if you punch a leukemia patient in the chin, they die instantly. <laughs> yeah, the yep. white blood cells. His family <laughs> many of them. takes the purse from the man they knew accidentally killed their yeah. father husband yep sues him for all of his money well, as I think well not that i guess right I don't know. but but ends up with all his money anyway so right. even okay. if they didn't they know that they have ill-gotten gains here right yep. and then they use the money they stole from him slash got from him <laughs> to build a gym with a two-bedroom apartment above it so that they can hire him at said gym with the money that is his, yep, his that money. they screwed that like that they that her husband screwed him out of by committing boxing suicide. <laughs> boxing, my son, my husband, boxing suicided you out of your purse. But don't worry, we have turned it into <laughs> a twelve dollars an hour job where you can work forever. <laughs> oh. I just I can't wait for the TV ads for the gym. They're like, do you want to learn to punch a guy so hard he dies? He fucking dies. <laughs> 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 Come on down to Chewy's gym. It's named after the guy I fucking murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Kids eat free on Thursday. <laughs> Chewy's gym. I'll punch you straight to heaven. Bring your body bags. <laughs> and then because this movie just hasn't given us enough stupid, he goes back to the diner. Right, he goes back to the diner to tell Malachi about all the good news about how he was set up to murder that guy. And it turns out that there was never a Malachi and there is no night shift at the diner. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. This actor, <laughs> it overdoes it so yes, much. Because yes. the guy goes, he goes, I need to speak to Malachi, which of course the reaction is supposed to be like, who? And he goes, I need to speak to Malachi. And the guy goes, who? 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 <laughs> like he just goes nuts. Like he's like, who? who? Until the, he will say stuff in this scene until the other actors stop him saying stuff. That's this guy's <laughs> yeah. acting. He over explains that Malachi doesn't exist yeah. so much in this scene. Yeah. He's like, I, in case you're wondering, we're not open nights. We're never yeah. open nights. We never have been. And if a black guy was here, I would stab him. Just so you know. So there's never been a black guy here. And there never will be. And look, here's the security camera footage of the last 24 hours. Malachi hasn't been here. <laughs> 
And uh, the only question was, I need to speak to Malachi. And he goes on for 15 minutes about like covering all the bases. Here are all the fingerprints no- of everyone who's touched my diner for the last three years. <laughs> After that's all over, he gets in the car. The person who's driving the car, he turns to him and he goes, I don't know. This asshole thought this was some kind of angel diner that was open after 2 p.m. What the fuck's wrong with him? Idiot. I love it, dude. They they left this in. The guy, this old man, he's my favorite. Oh, mwah, he's the best. Because he's like, he, like you say, he tries to improvise more things. Tell He's like, could you be thinking of the city diner? Maybe it's the city diner. It's a few blocks down. And then he starts trying to improvise, giving him directions. Yeah. I swear to God. And he says, you go down to two blocks in the city and he like runs out of ideas <laughs> and, and then, the guy th- and then <laughs> you're there <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say like oh turn right on uh, you know main street and go down he's like it's maybe the city diner it could be the city diner there's maybe go down two blocks in this oh thank god yeah i can't stop talking oh thank god <laughs> oh So, okay, so now we get him leaving the shelter for his new apartment, and then the fucking van lady shows up, right? He's about to walk (laughs) out, and the van lady shows up to pick him up, and it's like, but you're a ghost, aren't you? How is that to be a ghost? (laughs) No, she's not. She didn't go in the diner. Remember? But okay, but, but then, then the she's... football guy has to be a ghost, right. but he's not. It's, yeah, it doesn't. And then and then he does not ask about Malachi. No. no. He gets in the van. He's like, yeah, I'm headed to Orlando. And he's not like, hey, um, <laughs> you remember <laughs> that Malachi exists, right? You drove me to that diner. You're aware. We talked of about it quite a bit. And she's like, I will drive you to Orlando, I guess. I don't, yeah, I, don't I will know. drive you to Orlando. This woman shows up at this corner every night waiting for someone to wander up. And she's like, hello, would you like a ride to literally wherever you're going? <laughs> yeah. Hello, so she's far. already told us that she has full custody of her kids and is the prime caregiver of them. But she could just, yep. you know, drive a guy to Orlando at midnight, sure, I guess. Why not? Why, for why, fun. why would you not do that? Yeah. And then, so so we watch him write God in his thankfulness book. It, and he has the handwriting of a nine-year-old. Yep. And it's, it's fucking hilarious. He he takes like three tries for him to get a G. Oh, he's he's holding it in his fist. Yeah. And, and, then, <laughs> and then they drive by the diner just as Malachi brings in Peter, the, the undercover cop with the needlessly complex backstory. Yep. So, so and, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I have to add this. Chewy, the man who faked his own death, oh. is now the bus boy at the diner. Wow. What? Really yeah, makes you I think. I missed that. I missed really that. Really take that in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. That's going to do it for our review of God, Where Are You? Thomas, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us. Just real quick, can you remind our listeners where they can go to hear some more from you? Oh, go he- go listen to opening arguments. Oh, by the way, actually, this this week on Serious Inquiries Only, part of uh, Trans Visibility Day, we broke down this awful transphobic book called The End of Gender by Dr. Deborah So. That is, it is, oh, it's so harmful. It's so shitty. And uh, Dr. Lindsay Osterman that I have on uh, now, she she broke down the science and it is really valuable. I, I just would encourage people to go Excellent. listen to that and share it out. Excellent. Okay, well, but yeah. Thomas, if half of what of it turned is true. <laughs> if ha- exactly. Find out if half of it yeah. is true. Find right, out. Right, right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, though, glad to hear you guys did that. I, I'll have that episode linked on the show notes along with, of course, links to your other shows. And while that's going to do it for the review, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to condemn ourselves to more of this. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. In the gritty true life film that promises to tell the real story behind Roe versus Wade when oh, it God premiered it. when it premiered at CPAC. Oh god. We'll be watching yeah, fuck you. Roe versus Wade. Oh fuck you oh. so fuckly. <laughs> oh. All right. So with that to look forward to we're going to bring episode 294 to a merciful close. Once again a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review wherever they let you do that. And you can help by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skating Idiot, Citation Need of the Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Google Drops on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work harder and another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. 
God found out that Chewie manipulated a poor aging boxer into thinking he killed him to death <laughs> and sent Chewie straight to hell. Good. Good. That homeless ex-cop's training eventually took over and he shot Malachi. <laughs> Eli punched a guy to death on the off chance it would lead him to a new podcasting gig and a free two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.